Chris, Lauren, thank you for being kind of the sacrificial lamb for all these Oregon questions we're about to ask. But what was your reaction when you saw your old team kind of um, show up in your guys' regional on, on Sunday? Um, I'll be honest, I was shocked. I was definitely shocked to see their name come up. I was excited, though, that we are getting to host a regional in general, but definitely the initial reaction was, was shock. You're kind of in a unique situation, the fact that you're also from Eugene. So I'm kind of wondering, have your parents been stopped at all in the grocery store at all? People you know, asking <laughs> no. about this matter. What's the reaction back home? Uh, back home, I have a lot of fans back home with my family, friends and everything. So they're really excited that they get to see two familiar teams out there competing potentially day two. So I think everyone's just excited. And there's obviously the narrative that's um, that is the Oregon, Texas debacle and the saga and the drama that that was a few years back. So I think that there is definitely that narrative that's there and we can't really avoid that. But I think I've, I've received nothing but support from my family and they haven't gotten any crazies in the grocery store or anything like that. So, so far, so good. All right, uh, Ryan, go ahead next. Lauren, obviously uh, Oregon's roster has turned over almost completely since you left, but just what do you think it'll be like to see, you know, maybe Haley Cruz or, you know, so just the Oregon uniform in your stadium? Yeah, um, you know, the softball world is a really small world and almost everyone we face throughout the Big 12 Conference, we, we know people on the other team and a lot of familiar faces. So it's nothing too crazy there. Um, I'm excited to see them. They were my good friends back at Oregon. So I have nothing but respect for them and for that program. All right, Jeff Parker, go ahead. Hey, Lauren, just with how crazy this year's been with COVID and all that, how much of a, of a uh, reward is it for you guys to get to host a regional here? And just what kind of atmosphere are you hoping for and kind of uh, expecting out there this weekend? I'm hoping for an explosive turnout with our fans and at our stadium. I'm thrilled that we're hosting. I truly just feel so grateful. And our team is so thankful that we get to stay home and that we get to have our, our family and friends close by to support us. But I'm looking forward to having fans out there and as high of a capacity as possible with the COVID guidelines. But I feel like it's been years since we've had postseason. It feels like forever ago. And so I just feel so lucky to be able to go out there and host and compete against good teams. All right, Danny, you're next. Lauren, obviously this isn't your decision to make, but you know, if you could, would you like to see a sold out crowd there? I mean, what would it you know, mean to actually kind of, you know, get, get McCombs full, full this weekend? I mean, I know I, I'm not the CDC, I can't make those decisions, but boy, if I could, I would want it sold out in a heartbeat. It's such an advantage to have your fans and to have the stadium be cheering for your name. And so I'm thrilled that we even get to have a few fans that we do, but I would definitely pull the trigger if we could have full capacity. All right, Ryan, you're up next. Obviously, when, when you joined Oregon's program, you guys were at the level where you were, you know, the number one seed in, at the College World Series. What has it been like to go with Mike to Austin, try to get Texas to that level? And, and how much did the pandemic kind of slow that down last year, not being able to, to play in the postseason? Yeah, um, Coach White is obviously an amazing coach, and he's highly respected in the softball community. And I clearly have so much trust in him and in his coaching abilities. I went from playing with him at Oregon to now playing with him at Texas and knowing what he represents and the culture that he upholds for whatever team he coaches, you know, that it's going to be a winning program when coach white is leading it. And we recognize that and we acknowledge that. And we're just super lucky to have him as our coach. All right, we'll go James next. And then Mark after that. Lauren, you expressed the shock from Sunday, and it was really at both programs. From a player perspective, I'm curious, just both sides could probably feel that this isn't necessarily right or just, uh, that you guys don't deserve to play a team who the NCAA selection chair admits is not the number 21 true seed, and that they could feel that they deserve a regional of their own. Uh, and then that this is perhaps being orchestrated for television as a player who is a central part of, as you mentioned, the drama of all this from years ago. How do you feel about this matchup being constructed the way it is? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it's obviously there's a lot of emotions that happen as soon as selection show occurs, but as much as you want to let it 
um, affect you or you want to go back and change it or whatever emotions you may have. At the end of the day, we don't have control over who they send to Austin and in a regional. We don't, we don't control who we play. So we have to really focus on what we can and what we can control is the attitude that we show up with the effort that we give and the perspective that we have in our heads. So we're really going to come out and just try and represent Texas, the big 12 conference and just this university to the best of our abilities and try our absolute best to ignore the outside noise. Cause it is loud, but just trying to focus on our game and just practice gratitude, just being in postseason and in the tournament. All right, Mark, go ahead. With, were the crowds in uh, Oklahoma very big? And if they were, uh, did it feel strange after going through a season of COVID like this? Yeah, so uh, do you, are you referring to Oklahoma City for the Big 12 tournament? Oklahoma City, yes, I'm sorry. Oklahoma. So Oklahoma City, there was, I was, I went there my freshman year with Oregon and I hadn't been able to play on the main field uh, at the Big 12 tournament my sophomore year. And then obviously last year was cut short. So this year was the first time I was able to play on that main field with the new seating up at the top. And it was incredible. It looked like a football stadium in my perspective. It just looked so big and so exciting. And you can just see how the game is growing and the fans that are continuing to show up even in trying times where travel may not be the easiest, but the fan show out was incredible. The new stadium is just amazing. And I'm really, really hopeful that we can make it to play there again this year. Thank you. All right, Danny, go ahead. Lauren, you're a person that's pretty active on social media. And I'm kind of wondering, not only with, you know, the Oregon, leaving Oregon and some of their fans, you know, showing up in y'all's mentions, to, you know, even this past weekend where you, you know, took to Twitter to def defend Mary in the, in the wave, you know, how do you as a student athlete navigate social media and those interactions with fans, especially the ones that are, you know, not, I mean, there are positives um, to social media, but, you know, the negatives and, you know, some of the negative things people have to say, say to you all. Yeah, social media is a blessing and a curse, 100%. And I did take to Twitter to back up Mary the other day. It's, it's hard. Uh, female, being a female in sport is difficult at times. And there are a lot of critics and a lot of people who have things to say that maybe don't make us feel great. And it's easy to interact with the trolls. It's easy to give them a response. But personally, this week, and I know a lot of other girls on the team as well, I deleted my Twitter app. I'm just not going to look at it out of sight, out of mind. I know that there's noise. I know that there's critics. I know people are going to have something to say, but what I can control is how I respond. And I, if I don't see it, I can't give them a response. So that's what I personally did this week is I just am erasing my Twitter. Uh, I'll get it back eventually, but I just deleted the app so that it's, it's not a temptation for me to go look and for me to allow that noise in because that's going to make the game bigger than it is. All right, Jeff, you're up next. Hey there, Lauren. Is getting off of social media something that you guys talked about as a group, or was that just a decision that you made and, and a few of the other ladies also made the same decision? It is something that we've chatted about as a group. Postseason, there's a lot of trolls out there that are going to have things to say, and there was a lot of controversy with the tournament seating, and that's just out of our control. And so we need to do the best of our ability to narrow our focus in on our game and our performance. And by doing a small step like erasing your social media apps for a week. It's not mandated by any means, but it is conversations that we had for people's mental space and their headspace and where they need to be at their best. And ignoring that noise is definitely gonna help us get to that point. Who started that conversation and was there any pushback? There was absolutely no pushback. We were just meeting as a team. We have frequent meetings in our team room and we were just chatting about um, perspective is actually what our conversation of the day about was about our perspective. And when there's people looking from the outside in, it changes your perspective and everyone has their own perspective of the drama of the saga of Oregon and Texas of regionals, the seating, everyone has their own perspective. And so we were just really wanted to practice gratitude that we get to host. And so there was absolutely no pushback whatsoever, but like I said, it wasn't mandated. It's just, uh, if you can, let's, Let's not interact with people that are looking for a reaction out of us. All right, uh, James, we'll go to you. And then if we have one more question, uh, we'll open it up first, I get, we'll, we'll go and then we'll get Lauren out of here and go to coach, okay? Lauren, since life had kind of moved on for everybody involved and then 
the roster here is certainly had changed over a lot other than, than Shea and Haley at this point. Even late Sunday night, I imagine over the last couple of years that you like really did move on, but did at any point the mind start to wander to all the various what ifs of everything of if everybody stayed, if, if Oregon was able to keep Mike and the whole group, because it's not just you, you guys were at Texas, obviously it was also uh, Kleist and, uh, and Moose and every, and uh, Mac and everybody as well. Did that, even come up in mind because I'm imagining a lot of this may have was visited, you know, three years ago, but you didn't think about it for the last three years. Did it come up at all Sunday night? Um, I don't think, I don't think it actually did come up in the what if of had we all still been at that program, everyone has moved on. And, you know, you mentioned so many names of Megan Kleist and Mia Camuso and Alexis Mack. We still have group messages with them. We still are in contact with them all the time. So regardless of where we're at, we still do keep in touch because that was a very, very special group my freshman year. And I have nothing but love and respect for every single one of those girls. And we do still keep in contact with them. And so I don't necessarily think there were any what ifs, but it was, it kind of did um, allow people to reach out again and kind of talk again if we haven't heard from them in a little bit. So if anything, it, it brought some girls that we haven't uh, talked to in a while come back and we got to chat and catch up, which was nice.